Soundstripe. Can't accept the loss, I'm hard headed. There's a little bit of madness to my method. Many falling off that fine line that I'm treading. I risk anything to be greater, and I'm not going to rob me of my victory. Number one, that's what I'm meant to be. With any means, only thing that makes sense to me. I can make nice or make history. I got that dog in me, yeah. Turn me up. Big energy got the ground going up. I got that dog in me, yeah. And yo, I take on anyone. I don't need no one, no one. I got that dog in me, yeah. I'm talking all right, no bark. I could rip your squad up. I got that dog in me, huh. So what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up? I told her move over. Enough of that mediocre ass. The man's is around in the stroller. Ice in my veins like a Happy birthday to these celebrities that have their big day today, November 22nd on Wednesday. Uh, model and wife of Justin Bieber, Haley Bieber, is 27. Actress Scarlett Johansson turns 39. Scream queen Jamie Lee Curtis turns 65. Actor Mark Ruffalo is 56. NFL wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster is 27, and actor Richard Kind of Mad About You is 67. And if Thanksgiving is your birthday tomorrow, you share it with Billy Ray's little girl and pop singer Miley Cyrus, who turns 31. Actor Bradley Stephen Perry turns 25. Jersey Shore star Snooki is 36. Happy birthday, Snooks. And Good Morning America star Robin Roberts is 63 tomorrow. Uh, if today or tomorrow is your birthday, have an amazing day full of cake, gifts, turkey, and most importantly, time with your family. I hope everybody's going to enjoy this weekend. Uh, Four-day weekend for a lot of people. Depends on where you work. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a crazy weekend. Tonight's going to be crazy, obviously. Today is considered Black Wednesday or Blackout Wednesday for all you newbie drinkers out there that go out and drink on these holidays. Um, but I hope everybody has a good time doing that. We got a fun-filled show today full of entertainment and sports. Uh, I'm going to be talking about my Week 12 picks and, of course, how I did last week for Week 11. Uh, I've got Survivor Series picks for this weekend. Uh, we're going to talk about the NCAA Top 25 teams. And, of course, entertainment side, uh, we're going to do the list of TV show dates for all you people waiting for your TV shows to come back. Uh, also, there's a rumor about the new Karate Kid movie that's coming out next year. Uh, are supposed to come out next year in 2024, and we'll talk about Dick Clark's Rockin' Eve. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about, and let's get it kicked off with the Bears season being over. After that loss last week to the Detroit Lions, it would be very, very difficult to do anything. Uh, most you could get if you won out would be nine wins on the season, and with the way a lot of teams are playing right now, I can't see us... Um, getting enough wins to make a wild card spot, even that third and final wild card spot. Um, but we'll look at the standings in a minute for that and see where everybody sits. Uh, but let's go into the Bears' final schedule. Uh, this Monday night, they play the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota before their bye week. Uh, so, you know, finally they get a bye week. I was kind of disappointed that the bye week was so long into the season because I feel like the Bears really could have used one a few weeks ago already. I just want to know how Matt Eberflus still has a job and Luke Getze. You have a big lead. Well, it wasn't huge, but it was a 12-point lead with less than five minutes left in the game. So, to me, that's a pretty decent-sized lead. Okay, I mean, that's a two-touchdown scoring lead, pretty much. I mean, 12 points, that's a touchdown, and which is six and seven, and then another touchdown. Or possibly two field goals would tie it. But the point is... How do you give up 12 points in less than 5 minutes? And on offense, 
Why are you running plays up the middle when you have Justin Fields, who you could give the ball to on those first two downs? Let him run. He can make magic. Everyone knows this. With his legs, he could make magic. I'm going to look really quick, and I'll tell you what Justin Fields' stats were for that game. But I'll tell you after we talk about their schedule. So uh, next week, like I said, we got the Vikings on Monday Night Football for this week. Um, And then after the bye week, they come back home and play the Lions. I hopefully that's a redemption game and the Bears win that one because they came close. They came close to all the starters for Detroit in there. Um, then the week after that, December 17th, they got the Browns in Cleveland. Then they play the Cardinals at home on uh, Christmas Eve. On New Year's Eve, it's the Falcons at the Bears. And then they finish off the season with the Green Bay Packers. So six games left. I see possibly three winnable games there. Um, so I think we end up with the season. If we can win those three games, I see us finishing with a record of six wins. So I was a little off. I said eight or nine wins for the season. We most likely will get six. I mean, even if we run the table, we get the nine that I predicted, the eight or nine. But I see a win with the Vikings. I think that that's a redemption game for them after losing to them. Um, I still think the Lions are going to beat us. I think we beat the Cardinals, and I think we beat the Falcons. I want to say we beat the Packers in Week Seven and Week Eighteen, but with the way we're playing, I just don't feel we're going to beat the Packers. That would be a nice fourth win, and that would give us seven wins for the season. Whether or not it happens is another story. We'll see what happens with that one, but I do believe that the Bears have a shot. But looking at Justin Fields' stats in this game. It really was a depressing ending to what was a decent game. You know, Justin Fields threw 169 yards and a touchdown, and he rushed for 104. But the main thing was his time management. And through the first three quarters, he had very good time management in that game. I I really believe he had good time management. Um... I just, I don't know. I I don't even know what to say right now anymore. I think the Chicago Bears really need to go out there, and they need to soul search. They've got six games left. You don't want to end the season with the same record as last year. You want to be better than last year. Four wins would be an improvement from last year's three wins. Not much, but at least a little better than last year. But honestly, six or seven wins would be even better. And out of the schedule that we have left, there's a possibility. But if Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze are not fired at the end of the season, then I'm calling for Ryan Pohl's head for that one. Because I, I just don't understand why he's keeping them now. And I get it. The Bears never fire people midseason. They never have, and they probably never will. But if anybody deserves to be fired right now, it's Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze. At minimum, Luke Getze should have been fired. How do you run twice? Now that deep pass, had ty- had Scott made that catch that Justin Fields threw to him that was right in his hands, had he not slowed down and just ran through the pass, he would have caught that, and this game would have been over. But, and I know that's not on Getze, but the two bonehead plays up the middle was the, was the dumbest idea ever. The first time I was like, oh God. And the second time I was like, oh jeez. And then I just shook my head because I knew that was just a Luke Getze move. He is a terrible offensive coordinator, and we can see why. We can see exactly why he was... um, We can see why he was Aaron Rodgers' guy because Aaron Rodgers didn't need him for anything. It's like Pat Mahomes not needing Matt Nagy. Matt Nagy just stands on the sideline and literally pretends like he's reading plays. I bet you Mahomes calls 90% of his own plays. I can almost guarantee that. And I wouldn't be shocked. Would I want Matt Nagy calling my plays after what he did in Chicago to Justin Fields and to uh, Mitch Trubisky? Heck no, I wouldn't want him calling my plays. I can guarantee you, I can guarantee this, when Matt Nagy became their offensive coordinator, Patrick Mahomes went into a room with them and said, dude, I got this. Don't even try to pretend like you're doing anything. Just sit there, look like you're reading off of the card, 
I'll call my own plays. You can throw in your expertise here and there on a play if you think of something that's going to trick the defense. But for the most part, I'm going to be the one. I'm the guy. That's what I would say if I was Patrick Mahomes. Now, I am going to tell you this. I am very disappointed in Pat Mahomes, though, in that game. I think he could have did better for me. In fact, the funny thing is, and I told people this, on my fantasy football team, Patrick Mahomes is my starter, and Justin Fields is the backup. I got Justin Fields just in case he started going off. Well, it actually was funny because I was looking last week, my matchup, I end up losing 130.72 to 129.63. All Patrick Mahomes needed for me was 18 points for the, for the whole game. Not that much to ask out of your starting quarterback who's a superstar quarterback. And he ended up only getting me 16.88 points. I was literally one point away from winning that, a little over a point away from winning that game. So yeah, I was mad. Get this, Justin Fields would have got me 21 points in that game had I started him. And I was thinking right before that game, I was thinking, what if Justin Fields does have a pretty decent game? What if he runs a lot and what if he passes the ball decent and scores a touchdown and no turnovers in this game knowing that deep down Justin Fields knows that he's playing to make the coaches happy to see where they're going to do with him for next year. So the next six games is all about Justin Fields. It's not about a wild card. It's not about any of that. It's about seeing if Justin is the man and the guy. He proved in the last game that he is a good quarterback and he can manage the clock when he tries to when you call good plays for him design runs rollouts rpos play action passes let him move the pocket this is where he strives and this is why even though he only had 169 yards in that game there were games that people were praising bajan for 162 so if you're going to praise him for 162 then you should praise Justin Fields for his 169. Quarterbacks aren't throwing every game 300 yards. In fact, if you look at the Monday Night Football game stats right now, from Monday night, neither superstar quarterback in Jalen Hurts or in Patrick Mahomes had a 300-yard passing game. So let's go look really quick. Let's see. I want us to make sure that I'm right on those stats, but yeah. So the Eagles, Jalen Hurts threw 150 yards and an interception and won. Patrick Mahomes threw 177 yards and two touchdowns with one pick. And the game was 21-17. to A close game that people enjoyed. So... I'm telling you now, not every game do you have to have 300 yards a game in the NFL anymore. Especially in a league where people rush the ball a lot. Swift for the Eagles had 76 yards rushing and a touchdown. And Pacheco had 19 carries for 89 yards in that game. Jalen Hurts, let's see. Rushing-wise, Jalen Hurts ran it 12 times for 29 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. And Patrick Mahomes, let's see what he did. He rushed six times for 38 yards. So, all these people calling Justin Fields a running back, go talk to Patrick Mahomes. Go talk to Jalen Hurts. Because both of them ran the ball a lot, too, in that game. This is not a passing league anymore. It is a running league with mobile quarterbacks. Just how it goes. Your Aaron Rodgers are getting played out. Your Tom Brady's are retiring. They're not pocket passers anymore. And you don't have to be a pocket passer. That's just how it goes. All right, moving on to the next thing. My Week 11 picks were terrible. I almost had an extra win with the Bears, but then they blew it. Um, But yeah. No, my, my picks last week were really bad. I won 7 for 7. 
I am 96 and 67. I was wrong about percentage wise. I was looking at ESPN's percentage. That was my percentile of where I am. So I've been wrong every week on that. So I apologize for that. But my actual um, thing right now, my actual percentage is 58.9% for the for the year. Not horrible. 96 and 67 for the year. Not bad at all. Week 11 was rough. I had a rough week. I start out good on my Thursday night football predictions. I'm usually predicting who wins those games. But I'm bad when it comes to everything else. So 7-7 seven and seven last week, just like the week before I was 7-7. Seven and seven. I'm hoping to be a little different. We have three Sunday game, or, uh, Thursday games because of Thanksgiving tomorrow. And one Black Friday game on Amazon Prime in the afternoon on Friday. So it's a little different this year this uh, season. We got some crazy stuff. So let's start it out. Uh, the Thanksgiving Day games. This is why my show is getting played on Wednesday. Because I want people to hear what goes on on Thursday. And I don't want to record on Thanksgiving Day so and put it on later that night. So we're doing it so I can preview all the games and let you know my picks for everything. So tomorrow's games uh, start out like this. Got the Packers and Detroit in the early afternoon game. I got Detroit winning that. I think the Packers are not going to win a lot more games. It's just not going to happen. And I think Detroit is going to eat them alive on Thanksgiving. And I hope they do because it's at home and it's their game. They do this every year. Uh, Commanders at Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are going to win that one. Uh, We'll see what happens with that. Uh, That's going to be a good one. Um, And then the night game tomorrow is going to be the 49ers and the Seahawks. I'm taking the Seahawks, or I'm taking the 49ers in that one. Um, And then Friday, there's a game uh, on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime is not going to have a game on Thursday night. They're going to do it on Friday instead. So that one's going to be the Dolphins and the New York Jets. Um, The Dolphins are going to win that one. I think that they win... Uh, pretty big in that over the Jets. I think the Jets, even though Aaron Rodgers claims he's coming back this year, which I doubt it, if they don't even make the playoffs, he has no reason to come back this year. He might as well just rest up and come back next year. Um, and then, so I got the Dolphins winning that one. Sunday's games at noon, we got the Saints and the Falcons. Uh, Saints are going to win that one. We got the Steelers and the Bengals. Steel Town's going to win that one in Cincinnati. Uh, We got the Panthers and the Titans. I have predicted the Titans a few times, and they've lost. But come on, guys. Don't let me down on this one. I got the Titans beating the Panthers. Panthers, I hope they just keep the one win. That's it. I don't want them to win any more games this year. I want them to get the number one pick in a sad fashion. Especially since we get their number one pick in Chicago. Uh, Tampa Bay and the Colts. I got the Colts beating the, the Tampa Bay Bucks in that one. Uh, It's in Indianapolis. Patriots and Giants. It's hard to even predict this game. You got two crap teams. You got a two-win team and a three-win team. This could go either way, but I took the Giants in that one. I think that last week they showed they are a little better than what people are thinking. Um, They put in a quarterback who's actually running the offense a little better. So, I mean, look, at last week I was actually wrong. I picked the Giants to lose their game. Who did they? What did they do last week? Let me see. Let me go back to my little notepad here. I can't even find where their game was. Who did they play last week? The Giants, or were they on a bye week? Let's see. Hold on. Do 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 do. Looking right here. Giants and Commanders. <laughs> I picked the Commanders. The Giants won. So yeah, I picked the Giants this week over the Patriots. Uh, Bill Belichick is out on his butt. In New England, and it's going to happen sooner than later. Um, and then the last noon game that week is the is this week is the Jags and the Texans. I'm taking the Jaguars. Three o'clock games on Sunday. Browns are going to play against who? Man, my handwriting is bad on this one. <laughs> Browns and Broncos. I got the Broncos. All right, that's who that is. Uh, Rams and Cards. I got the Rams beating the Cardinals. I don't think the Cardinals are getting a lot more wins this year. Um, And then Chiefs and Raiders. I'm taking the Raiders in that one. I think the Chiefs are going to have like a little skid now, sadly enough. 
after that loss because that was a pretty bad game that they played against the number one Eagles team. That is terrible. Um, and then we got the Bills and Eagles. I'm taking the Eagles. They're going to go 10-1 and one after this week. Uh, Sunday Night Football, Ravens and Chargers. I got the Ravens winning that one on Sunday Night Football. And then Monday Night Football, Bears and Vikings. Bears are going to beat the Vikings. I think that we're going to win that game. It's going to be sweet, and we're going to end the football week on a high note for the Bears. That's what I think is going to happen. When I come back in a second, I'm going to be talking about the WWE Survivor Series picks. That's right. This weekend is the Survivor Series in Chicago. It's going to be crazy. I'll talk about that in just a minute. All right, here we go. Um, this week, Chicago is the mecca of wrestling. That's right. We are the mecca of wrestling this week. Not only do we have WWE here this weekend on Friday and Saturday night for the WWE SmackDown and WWE Survivor Series, but tonight at the Wintrust Arena, AEW Dynamite is going to be in Chicago as well. That is crazy. Think about that. We have AEW on Wednesday, and then we have SmackDown on Friday, and then on Saturday, we have WWE Survivor Series. That's a pretty decent weekend for wrestling fans. And look, I'm not a big fan of AEW, but I also agree that they are a formidable, not really a foe, but they are the type of team, of the, the, they are the type of wrestling organization that deserves to be there. Even though I don't really like it, I think that they do have some decent wrestlers. I think that a lot of the older wrestlers that went from WWE are pretty decent there. And I just like it. I like Jericho. I like Edge. I like Christian. I like Sting. You know, what's not to like about all those guys? So, yeah, I'm glad that it's here this weekend. And I hope that, um, you know, AEW does pretty decent tonight in Chicago. I know it will. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be crazy. So make sure if you don't have tickets, go on to like a ticket site and see if you can get last minute tickets for all three events this weekend. It's going to be crazy. Uh, here's my picks for WWE Survivor Series. So this is the picks that I picked. Uh, here's the matches. And this is as of now. It could change. There could be more matches. Now, on my TikTok, I'm going to do on Saturday my predictions on there too so if there's any extra matches added on then on friday night to, to saturday then i will have that done so um let me see let me do my thing here so here we go let's do this uh number one carlito and santos escobar that's going to be a decent match between LWO members, um, I've got Carlito winning that. I think that you know, obviously, he's gonna avenge Ray and getting his title taken away because of what uh, Escobar did in that match um, where he lost to Logan Paul. So I think Carlos Escobar is going to, or Santos Escobar is gonna lose. Carlito is gonna win. Uh, Intercontinental title match: Gunther versus The Miz. Winner is gonna be Gunther. He's gonna be the champion. After that, I don't think The Miz is going to take it from Gunther, and I don't think it's his time to lose it yet. Um, maybe soon, but not this Sunday, or Saturday. Uh, let's see, women's title match, Rhea Ripley and Zoe Stark. I got Rhea Ripley winning. I don't see any title changes at Survivor Series at all. Uh, there's only two title matches, so I really don't think anybody's going to like take the titles from anybody. Um, I think that these are just filler matches for the big ones. Um, and there's only like five matches right now on the card. I don't know if any are even going to be on the pre-show, or if they're just going to put these all on the main card, or maybe they'll throw a pre-show match. If any of them make the pre-show, it's going to be Carlito and Santos. That's the one that's going to go to the pre-show, if there is one. Uh, but let's look now. Women's uh, war game match, this is going to be awesome. Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Shotzi, and Becky Lynch versus Damage Control, which is Becky Lynch, EO Sky, uh, Asuka now. And the fourth girl, I don't really know her. I, don't, I didn't even know her when she originally was there. Um, so she's going to be in that match too. Uh, but that's going to be a good War Games match. But I think Team Bianca is going to win. Um, I think that, honestly, right now, Damage Control 
is I think that Asuka is going to get into it with with uh, 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 what's her name? Oh my god, I can't even think of her name right now. Um, hold on, it'll come to me. Bailey. <laughs> I couldn't think of it for a second. Um, I think Asuka and Bailey are going to get into it eventually, and this is going to start that rift. Uh, let's see. And then the men's war games match: Judgment Day and Drew McIntyre taking on the team of Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, Jey Uso, Sami Zayn, and the returning Randy Orton. That's right. Randy Orton is back. As of this Saturday. It's going to be amazing. Will he be there Friday night for SmackDown? Maybe. Or will they just wait to hear that pop on Saturday night? I would wait and hear that pop Saturday night. But you want to get the crowd hyped up for it. A lot of your people who are at Friday night SmackDown are also going to be at the other one too. See, I'm from 90s old school wrestling, early 2000s wrestling where people were a surprise because there were no dirt sheets, so we didn't know guys were coming in, and they would just surprise you. Like, that song would hit, I Hear Voices would pop up, and then boom! I remember in 2008, I believe it was, when John Cena came out at the Royal Rumble, and no one thought he was coming back early from his injury, because he had a really bad tear in his shoulder, and he came back at the Royal Rumble at number 30, and the pop was crazy. Nobody knew he was there. Just like AJ Styles in the Royal Rumble. There was rumblings that he was going to be there, but nobody knew for a fact. And when his music hit, everybody went crazy. So, with the dirt sheets now, it's a little different. That's why they spoil stuff. Like CM Punk, when he came back to AEW, instead of just showing up there, and making the crowd go crazy, they announced it early because they were already reporting that he was coming back. So that's why they do that. But yeah, so I'm excited about Randy Orton this Sunday. Um, I'm excited to see, on, or Saturday, I always say Sunday because I'm used to pay-per-views on Sunday. But yeah, Saturday is going to be lit at the Allstate Arena. It really is going to be crazy when Randy Orton comes out. Um, but my prediction for the match is that Judgment Day is going to win. And the reason Judgment Day is going to win that match is because Randy Orton is going to turn on Cody Rhodes. He's going to come out as... He's going to do a heel, a face heel turn in literally 30 minutes. Because he's going to come out as a good guy, he's going to have a great match, and then boom, he's going to turn on Cody Rhodes. And it's going to set up a legacy battle with the two of them. Um, going into here's the thing Cody Rhodes is going to take the title off of Roman at Wrestlemania but the reason why they cannot have Cody Rhodes do anything now with Roman is because if you're going to do it you got to do it at Mania if you're going to end the story you got to end it there but here's the thing. He needs filler matches up until then. He can't just take a break until the Royal Rumble. So they're going to have like a little feud with him and Randy Orton that's going to go into the Rumble. And then I don't even know if Cody Rhodes is necessarily going to win the Royal Rumble this year or if he's going to win Elimination Chamber. Because I would love to see Cody as a two-time Rumble winner in a row. And I, the reason I like that idea is because they did it with Stone Cold Steve Austin. They've done it with a few guys with the back-to-back -back Rumble wins. So... I'd like to see Cody Rhodes do that. I think that would be great. So I'm hoping that's the route that they go. Um, but yeah, that's my predictions for Saturday's um, pay-per-view. We'll see what happens. Chicago is going to be a great city to host all this wrestling. And I'm glad to see that AEW's here and WWE in the same week. And it's going to just be fun for the city of Chicago. It's going to be fun um, for everybody to get to see all that action this week. Um, there's probably people going to AEW tonight. And then there's probably people going, the same people are going to go Friday and Saturday to WWE. So it's going to be great. And let's hope that everybody has a good time. Uh, now let's go into NCAA. This is my last sports topic of the day. Here's the top 25 ranked uh, colleges after last week. Uh, Georgia is 11-0 at the number one spot. Ohio State is 11-0 at number two. Michigan Wolverines, my school, they are 11-0 at number three. Washington is 11-0 at number four. Florida State's 11-0 at number five. Oregon coming in at number six at ten and one. Uh, Texas at number seven is ten and one. Alabama roll tide at ten and one at number eight. 
Louisville's at 10 and 1 at number 9. Number 10 is Missouri at 9 and 2. Penn State is also 9 and 2 at number 11. Old Miss is number 12 at 9 and 2. Uh, let's see. Oklahoma, the Sooners are number 13 at 9 and 2. LSU 8 and 3 at 14. Oregon State is 8 and 3 at number 15. Arizona number 16 at 8 and 3. Uh, Notre Dame is number 17 at 9 and 1. Tulane is number 18 at 10 and 1. Uh, Kansas State is 8 and 3 at 19. Uh, number 20 is Iowa at 9 and 2. Oklahoma State is 21 at 8 and 3. Liberty, 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 Liberty is number 22 at 11 and 0, which is funny. Um, Toledo is number 23 at 10 and 1. Uh, and number uh, 24 is James Madison at 10 and 1. And Tennessee comes in at number 25 on the rankings at 7 and 4. Uh, so, yeah, crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy uh, at the top 25. But, yeah, college is almost done. Ohio State of Michigan this Saturday. Huge, huge game for Michigan fans. That's a big rivalry. We can't wait to see what happens. Hopefully Michigan wins it for Jim Harbaugh. Um, but, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, in a second, I'm going to go into entertainment news, and I'm going to show you a list of all the shows that are returning. I bet everybody's excited about that. I'll be back in one second. All right, here we go. I bet everybody's excited. The writers and actors strike is officially over. All the TV shows are going to start recording um, their episodes. Movies are kicking off in full gear now also. Um, TV shows are all going to be coming back in early 2024, like around January, February, and I have the full list of everything that's premiering and when for your favorite networks. Uh, Saturday, December 23rd. This is exciting. I saw this and I was really happy about it. Um, a new John Cryer show is premiering. And if you know me, you know I love me some Two and a Half Men. I love John Cryer. He is a really cool guy and he is in a new TV show called Extended Family, and the series premiere is going to be Saturday, December 23rd, right before Christmas. That's a good Christmas gift for Two and a Half Men fans, and I'm very excited because Charlie Sheen's going to be in a new show um, about bookies, and he's going to play himself in a few episodes, so it's exciting seeing the Two and a Half Men crew uh, back out there and doing something. Uh, also, that same night on NBC, right afterwards, is a special holiday episode of the second season of Night Court. I'm excited because I didn't see the whole first season of Night Court, but I did catch up uh, maybe three or four of them, and they were really good. Very, very good show. Uh, a good reboot, or actually, it's not really a reboot. It's almost a revival because they're bringing back a lot of the old cast that are still around. Um, it was sad that Bull didn't get to be in it before he died, you know, and stuff. I wish he would have made a cameo last year, but... It's okay. You know, he just didn't want to do it. He was in his 80s. He just didn't want to be on it. Uh, Monday, January 1st now. That was December 23rd. Monday, January 1st is America's Got Talent Fantasy League on NBC. Uh, Tuesday, January 2nd, the series premiere of The Floor on Fox. Uh, Wednesday, January 3rd, you can see the show I Can See Your Voice, season 3 premiere on Fox. Um, and then that's at 8 p.m. And then 9 p.m. is We Are Family, the series premiere on Fox. Uh, Sunday, January 7th at 8 o'clock is Grimsburg series premiere following an NFL doubleheader on Fox. Um, and then 9.30 is The Great North, season 4 premiere on Fox. Uh, Tuesday, January 9th is the season premiere of uh, the third season of La Brea on NBC. That's going to be good, so make sure you tune in for that. My favorite is here, Wednesday, January 17th on NBC. The one Chicago shows are back. Chicago Med, then Chicago Fire, and then, of course, Chicago PD. So I'm excited about that. And then the following day, I'm even more excited as we've got big premieres on NBC of Law & Order, Law & Order SVU, and Law & Order Organized Crime. I'm excited about the three of those, too. Uh, Monday, January 22nd, season 28 premiere of The Bachelor on ABC. Still can't believe that show's been on long. Oh my gosh, The Golden Bachelor. Crazy show. We'll talk about that next week, because it's going to be the finale. Uh, so we'll talk about it on next week's show. Um, 
And then on a season premiere on Fox of TMZ Investigates on January 22nd. And then America's Most Wanted season premiere. America's Most Wanted's back. I didn't even know this. That's a Monday night. I'm going to have to record that because I work. Um, and then 2020 True Crime series premiere on Monday, January 22nd. Uh, Thursday, February 1st, uh, season 2 premiere of Farmer Wants a Wife on Fox. You know what? We started watching that and we never finished it. We never even got past the third episode. Um, kind of crazy show, but it is coming back, I guess, for a season two. Apparently, it did good. Uh, Wednesday, February 7th, the Connors is going to be in their final season in season six. And uh, that's sad. I'm sad it's going. But it made it six years, so not too bad. Uh, not Dead Yet is going to be on right after that on ABC for their season two premiere. And then Abbott Elementary on a one-hour season three premiere on ABC that same night. Um, uh, also that night, Judge Steve Harvey season premiere on ABC. Uh, Sunday, February 11th, Tracker. That is with Justin Hartley from This Is Us, his new TV show. That's going to be the series premiere, and that's an estimated start time right after the Super Bowl. Yes, because Sunday, February 11th, of course, is Super Bowl. So don't forget about that. And then mark your calendars for February 12th, uh, The Neighborhood Season 6 premiere on CBS. I don't know what this show is. Bob Hart is going to be on Season 5 premiere on CBS. Never heard of that show, even though it's five years in. And then, of course, NCIS Season premiere 21 uh, at 9 o'clock. And then NCIS Hawaii is right after that. Uh, Tuesday, February 13th, FBI Season 6 premiere on CBS. Uh, right after that is FBI International Season 3 premiere. Um, and then 10 o'clock right after that one is FBI Most Wanted Season 5 premiere. So that's big. Uh, Thursday, February 15th, the season premiere of Young Sheldon, which I believe, I think that's in its final season also. Uh, Ghosts is right after that at 8.30. And then 9 o'clock is So Help Me Todd on CBS. Um, and then fr uh, Friday, February 16th, the return of SWAT Season 7 premiere on CBS. Fire Country Season 2 premiere on CBS. And then Blue Bloods, which I believe that's in its final season, is premiering on CBS. Uh, I might be wrong about that. I'll have to look into that. And then Sunday, February 18th, The Equalizer Season, season 4 premiere. American Idol is back on February 18th with Season 22 premiere on ABC. And Tracker. Regular time peri uh, period premiere on CBS. That's the regular show. That's the show that's going to premiere after the Super Bowl um, with Justin Hartley. It's regular day and time. will be Sunday, February 18th, and every Sunday after that. Uh, so, yeah, on CBS. Uh, then CSI Vegas is on CBS. That's the premiere of that. And What Would You Do? Season premiere on ABC that night. Uh, February 20th, Will Trent starts on ABC. The Rookie follows it on ABC, and then The Good Doctor season premiere uh, for season 7. Uh, Monday, February 26th is The Voice season 25 premiere, uh, and then Deal or No Deal Island is on after that one. Uh, Thursday, February 9th is Elizabeth, and that is a series premiere on CBS. Tuesday, March 5th, The Cleaning Lady season 3 premiere, um, and Alert, Missing Persons Unit season 2 premiere on Fox. Um, Wednesday, March 6th is The Masked Singer, season 11 premiere on Fox, and Animal Control, season 2 premiere. Um, and then, oh, we're getting to the end, right here. The last couple of premiere dates, The Amazing Race, 90-minute season 36 premiere on CBS, is going to be on Wednesday, March 13th at 8 o'clock, or 8.30, sorry. Um, and then Thursday, March 14th, on ABC is a season 7 premiere of 911. As everybody knows, Fox got rid of it and ABC picked it up. Uh, Grey's Anatomy on season 20 premiere. And then Station 19 will be on Thursday, March 14th, right after Grey's Anatomy on ABC. So that's your list of big premiere dates. Man, I'm excited. I cannot wait for all that stuff to be out. The Extended Family Show with John Cryer. 
that is going to be a fun show. Uh, a little bit about that show, I did save this article. Uh, the network released a quasi-trailer Tuesday, which features the footage of Michael Malley's creative multicam. The series centers on former married John Cryer and Julia, who's played by Abigail Spencer, who after an amicable divorce decide to continue to raise their kids at the family home while taking turns on who gets to stay with them. Navigating the waters of divorce and child sharing gets more complicated for Jim when the owner of his favorite sports team, scrub star Donald Faison, enters the picture and wins Julia's heart. The three of them will be raising the kids together in the same house. So it's going to be a fun show. Almost like a two and a half men, but with a woman in it. It's going to be kind of cool. Um, I can't wait for it. Go check out the, the trailer for it. It's called Extended Family. It's a really, really decent looking show and i think it's gonna do really good uh so yeah that's it for tv show dates make sure you made notes go back and rewind that part listen to it again if you want to catch your favorite show and when it's on the market on the calendar uh ralph macchio and jackie chan are going to reprise their roles for a new karate kid movie coming out next year it says the miyagi verse will continue beyond cobra kai's final fight remember in 2024 we're going to see the final season of Cobra Kai, and I believe this movie is going to tie into the entire thing. Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan are teaming up for a brand new Karate Kid movie set to release next year, in which they will both reprise their roles from the martial arts franchise. The as yet title film is targeting a December 13, 2024 release, with Jonathan Estwell directing from a script written by Rob Lieber, who uh, wrote Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween. According to Sony Pictures, the studio behind the franchise, the movie will both fuse and continue the movie's mythology. The new story will bring the characters to the East Coast and focus on a teen from China who finds strength and direction via martial arts and a tough but wise mentor. So it sounds decent. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the original Karate Kid hit the screens in 1984 and followed Ralph Macchio's Daniel LaRusso, a Brooklyn teen who finds himself in an unlikely karate champion after being trained by Mr. Miyagi, Pat Morita, his apartment handyman and former karate master. It spawned two sequels, plus a spinoff movie, The Next Karate Kid, which also starred Morita, before it was remade in 2010, starring Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan. A sequel series, which is Cobra Kai, hit the YouTube Premium eight years later. After two seasons on that platform, the series eventually moved to Netflix, where it now waits its sixth and final season. Set decades after the original film, the series stars Williams Becca, reprising his role as former bully Johnny Lawrence, who reopens his old dojo in a bid to get his life back on track. Eventually, he teams up with LaRusso, now a rich and successful car dealer, to stop his old mentor, John Kreese, from destroying the minds of the Valley's youth. So, this movie is going to be a continuation story of everything. So, we'll see where they go with it. I'm excited, and I really, really hope that they keep going. I'm going to be back in a second with movie releases for this week on Thanksgiving week, and we'll see what's going to hit theaters uh, this weekend. If you don't feel like going out much this weekend because it's going to be a little crazy, here's a couple of movies that are premiering this week, and you can watch them right now. Good Burger 2 with Keenan and Kel. That's right, they made a sequel to their Good Burger franchise. It is going to be right on uh, Paramount+. Plus, So you can check that out if you want to watch that. That's a family-friendly movie. Uh, Leo is on Netflix now. It's Leo the Lizard has been stuck in the same Florida school for decades. When he learns he has only one year left to live, he plans to escape to freedom, but instead has to rescue his class from their horribly mean substitute teacher. It's a kid's movie. It's rated PG. It's with Adam Sandler, and it's on Netflix. Um, it's like a cartoon. You can go check that out. And then a Wesley Snipes movie, Back on the Strip. And that, it's a comedy, rated R, it's on Prime Video right now. You can check it out. It says, After losing the woman of his dreams, Merlin moves to Las Vegas to pursue work as a magician. Only get hired as a frontman in a revival of the notorious black male stripper crew. The Chocolate Chips, led by Luther. Now broken, broken, the old domesticated, out-of-shape chips 
put aside former conflicts and reunite to save the hotel they used to perform in while ho- helping Merlin win back his girl. Uh, it's with Wesley Snipes, Tiffany Haddish, Amelia Adams, and Gary Owen. That sounds like a good movie. That one is on Prime Video, so make sure you check that out. Um, other than that, I, it doesn't look like there's a ton of great movies that are out. Uh, Napoleon is the featured one with Joaquin Phoenix. Um, that looks pretty decent. That comes out this week. In fact, that's released today in the theaters. Uh, so go check that out if you're a Joaquin Phoenix fan, which I am. Um, I'll check that out when it comes streaming. Uh, the movie Wish is also out. And that one is coming out, and that is all actually already out. It's called Wish. It's a kid's movie, so go check that out. Also in the theater still is The Hunger Games that came out last week, uh, Trolls Band Together, so Captain the Marvels movie, and that movie Thanksgiving is out, so you can go check that out too. Uh, but yeah, so those are new movies and current movies that are out. Go check those out if you uh, want to get and just do something fun this weekend in the house or at the movies and not be out in the crazy stores. Uh, Dick Clark's rocking New Year's Eve uh, with Ryan Cree- uh, Seacrest returns to ABC for the fifth year. Uh, for a fifth year in a row, Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest will return to ABC to celebrate the year's best in music with a night of superstar performances. On Monday, it was announced that ABC and Dick Clark Productions extended their agreement for the must-see New Year's Eve celebration to air on the network through January 1st, 2029. Uh, Hosted by Ryan Seacrest live from Times Square, the show celebrates the end of the year with star-studded performances and also gives a look at New Year's celebrations from around the world. This year's show will air live on Sunday, December 31st at 8 p.m. on ABC. Details about co-hosts, performers, and additional locations will be announced soon. Uh, so I'll have that information once they release it. But yeah, Ryan Seacrest locked in till 2029 uh, for New Year's Rock and Eve. That's cool because I was never a huge Seacrest fan, but he does do a good job on that show. So I'm glad he's coming back to host it. Uh, hopefully we'll get some Jenny McCarthy and Donnie Wahlberg back a- once in a while. I would love to see them. That's actually where they met for the first time and started dating so that's a cool story and now they're married uh but yeah so that's it for the show i hope everybody has a wonderful thanksgiving weekend make sure you don't get too crazy on black friday in the stores believe me i've done it before i've worked there so please please do not get crazy in those stores i've worked them it was crazy and i will never forget those moments i still have ptsd going to stores i won't go into stores much on Black Friday because of that unless I really need something. I try to shop like the day after. So yeah, make sure you have some fun this weekend. Eat some turkey, eat some pumpkin pie. If you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, go to a movie. There's plenty of movies out or stream one at home. Just spend some time with your family. You don't have to celebrate the holiday to be with your family and have a good time that day. Uh, Go see a movie. Go do something with them, especially if you're lucky enough to have the day off. Uh, just go and make some memories because you don't know how many more of these holidays that you have left in the world so make sure you enjoy them Christmas season's kicking off as of tomorrow Uh, so make sure you guys get your Christmas decorations going and have some fun this weekend make it a good memory watch some football games let's see if I do better than 7-7 this week Uh, let's see how many games are there let's see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 games this week will I be better than 8 and 8 we'll see I'll see everybody next week for the show Uh, I'll have some more fun topics for entertainment make sure you come and follow me on all social media and email me with ideas for the show things you want to hear me talk about or just tell me how bad I suck or how good I am Tell me all that too. Email me. All that information is down below in the show topics. So make sure that you come and follow me on all social media. And tell all your friends to listen. Because there's going to be something they'll want to hear on this show. I'll see everybody next week. Have a wonderful holiday. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And make sure you don't die. I'll talk to everybody next week. Peace.